We are live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, rabbis and rabbitsons, welcome to the FM Home Loans AFI League Championship Broadcast. Here back with your host, Rothby Crystal Weiss, for the last show of an amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful season, a historical season. A season with 39 teams entering. Only one champion. Four divisions. 32 teams made the top tier playoffs. And Heiko Travel. We're walking away with the FM Home Loans AFI League Holy Land Bowl winning back to back championships. Thank you for joining us here on a special Monday evening show. We're going to get to it right now. We're going to take a look at what went wrong for Pizzeria Front. What went right for Heiko Travel. It's all cut up now on FM Home Loans AFI League Broadcast. Coming into this game, we had two players from one player from each team last week. Chaim Harris from Heiko Travel. We had Yoni Shorts from Pizzeria Front. Both guys coming in pretty confident, feeling pretty good about their chances. Heiko Travel did not really have any really hardship getting to the championship. Really did not play any of the best teams, any of the top teams getting here. Last year, they knocked off all the top teams. This year, they did not have to play any of them. On the other side, you had Pizzeria Front defeating the Psycho Bunnies. Then coming back and defeating another top team in D.C. getting to the championship. Really impressed by their run. A little Cinderella story. Versus the big, big bad boys. Little, little giant story. Sandlot story. Were they going to be able to complete the historical run? This emotional run by Pizzeria Front and win the championship. Unfortunately, they had big, bad boys to go through. They had Avi Zern, Svi Sklar, Levi Sklar, David Abel, Chaim Harris. All the top players of Heiko Travel to try to get through. I'm going to take a couple key points. What I thought coming into this game. What I saw go wrong for Pizzeria Front. Like we said on the show Tuesday night last week, Pizza Rear Front needed to continue to do what they do all season long. That's go up the field methodically, not play turnover football, control the football, control the clock. All those three needed to go exactly right, not throw any turnovers. Basically, they needed to play a perfect game. What I saw them play, unfortunately, was their short passing game was not working out. Their run game, which is usually not existent, was again non existent. I would like to see Akiva Shorts run the ball a little more. That didn't happen. On the defensive side of the things, they were not able to get key flag grabs when they actually got to Avi Zern. They were not able to put enough pressure on Avi Zern. They were not able to stop the top wide receivers of Heiko Travel. Now, definitely Heiko Travel, they were going to get their points. But Pizzeria Frat, I did think, was going to be able to contain them. On third and longs, Pizzeria Frat was giving away that first down, was giving away those key third down and longs. Unfortunately, the extra things that Pizzeria Front usually does good, the 50-50 balls, they were not able to do good. They gave up a first play kickoff return touchdown. That cannot happen. They gave up an interception touchdown. That cannot happen. They were not taking advantage when Heiko Travel gave them a short field to work with. That cannot happen. So the game got started with actually Heiko Travel, Chaim Harris taking it the full distance on a kickoff return. Then came Pizzeria Front driving the full length of the field, tying up this ballgame at seven. After that, it was all Heiko Travel, scoring a few times before the half to take off 21, 21 point lead. Touchdowns, two touchdowns by David Abel, two touchdowns by Abe Bresnik, two touchdowns by Chaim Harris, one on a kickoff return and one on an interception touchdown. Pizzeria Front could not afford these mistakes, and they, made, they did not play their game. And I'll be honest with you, Heiko Travel is the type of team, everybody knows it. They don't have to play their A game. They could play their C game probably or a B minus game and win this championship. But they were playing an A plus game. All their players were at top level. No, Barely any drop passes. Avi Zern probably played the best game of his career. I've never seen him zip balls in like that. I mean zipping them in. Easy catches. Easy throws. David Bell, great game. Abe Resnick, great game. Yossi Cher, I mean, Svi Sklar, putting pressure on Akiva Shorts every play. Akiva Shorts, I'm not sure if he threw one time, not off his back foot. I'm not sure, not one time. That can't happen. That can't happen. I would like to see him scramble a little more. I would have liked to see that short game, passing game, 
being a little more snip, a, more, a little more spitz, was not. Chai Travel definitely executed their game plan, executed their passes, went Avi Zern had the run going for him. Avi Zern had the short game, pass game. Avi Zern had the long pass game. And I'm telling you, on these third, third and longs, his receivers knew exactly where the first down was, exactly made that curl. Boom, ball's right there. Abe Breslick scoring two beautiful touchdowns. Everything going right, and it ended in a 48-7 victory for Heiko Travel back-to-back championships. Once again, you have Thunder Muffins winning back-to-back. You have Imre Hibbillies winning one in the middle, beating the Thunder Muffins. Then the next year, losing to Heiko Travel. And then this year, Heiko Travel winning again. And let me tell you something. Right now, you know, if Zern and the Sklar brothers and Davida Bell and these guys here coming back, they can put together a dynasty. I'm talking about four or five, six championships right now in a row. Avi Zern is in the prime of his career. He's playing the best football I've ever seen him play right now. I'm talking about the best football. Now, we'll talk about later on the show. I definitely got a little muster for Avi Zern and the boys. We'll, we'll, we'll speak about that later on. But right now, we're going to turn to the FM Home Loans AFI League hotline. We're going to call up on our man, owner of the team, Heiko, Mr. Heiko Kaufman himself. A big fan of the show. A big reason why this team is one of the top teams in this league. A big reason why this team came together. Let's get him on the hotline. Heiko, please tell me, are you more of a Menorah guy or a Megillah guy? Menorah. What's your favorite part about Perm? Drinking. How did this team come together and how did, who chose who? Um... I guess there's a little bit of both. I mean, I dive in the same show as Avi Zern, and uh, when my team fell apart, we were kind of, you know, talking to each other, and then Avi said, you know, they were looking for a sponsor, and I was thinking about it, and Steve Squire called me up and said, all right, let's do it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Coming into the season, is this, exa- is this exactly what you expected? This is definitely what I was hoping for. Um, and uh, I guess I guess it's what I expected. I, I, I you know always have my doubts, even though very very strong team going in, and I wasn't sure really if there would be any team that would be able to give us you know a legitimate um, you know challenge. But uh, well, I think it was what I expected. You know, a lot of the owners in this league, you know, they don't always come out to every single game. They don't always support the team like you do. What's your favorite part about coming out to the game? Football. That's just exciting. Exciting to be part of. Exciting to watch. A lot of energy. Good. It's a lot of fun. Speak to me a little bit about, you know, I see you coming with your son a lot of times, coming with your kids. You know, it's become a little bit of a a Heiko Kaufman, a Kaufman family event. Yeah, my, my siblings started coming this year as well, my brothers and sisters. Most of my family was uh, out of town for the championship, unfortunately. But uh, my mother comes a lot, and um, it's, it is a family event. Uh, it's great to see them there on the sidelines supporting the team. Uh, and my brother was there by the championship, one of my brothers and brother Avi. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see. Is there a weakness on the Heiko Travel football team? Uh, there's, 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 I think we have uh, probably not as many fans as I would have liked. That's interesting. I do like that call by you. You know, definitely not a yeshiva team, not a team where everybody uh, comes from the same background. So definitely not a yeshiva or a group of guys really coming to back you guys up. Do you guys uh, enjoy having this, you know, uh, you know, you guys are like the New York Yankees of old, you know, everybody really trying to beat you guys, everybody looking at you as the bad guys. Is that something you guys thrive off of? I think so. I think so. I mean, yeah, I think so. I think when, when, when the, the more the, the opposition, the more the, you know, the better they play. How did you enjoy this year where the league set up their divisions where, you know, you guys were playing top talent every single week? It definitely gave us, you know, a lot more of a challenge and it kept us on the toes more. Kept us on the toes more. Um, it's, just, it, it, it's a little interesting, and I guess it's the challenge you always have is when you have, you know, all the, all the divisions end up kind of even in the playoffs. You have, you have your uh, season stuff, but kind of is a little weird then. But, you know, the, the regular season is much more exciting. 
It's a little interesting to you. You know, last year you were you were still the owner of Chaiko Travel, but a different type of team. And this team was really called uh, Tsioni Fishman. And, you know, last year you actually lost in, I believe, uh, the quarterfinals. Speak to me a little bit about, you know, uh, you know, last year you lose into this team. Now you take over this team and you and you win with this team. You know, is, is it mixed emotions? Uh, I wouldn't say mixed emotions. The team didn't have in the team we had last year as much as I wanted to have. And that was a heartbreak for me. I was really looking forward to that team. Really pumped uh, in the preseason when I thought we were going to get it together and we were going to have another fucking team. You know, we we're, were going to fight our way for the championship. Uh, this this year, I mean, I I got I got a lot of the guys from my team my my team last year. Um, Ashley Dax, my quarterback, was in TC. It was great to watch him play. A lot of my guys uh, were on Psycho Bunny this year. They had a very solid team. It was a lot of fun to watch them play. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like it was just a matter of uh, what happened, and that's not much that can be done. I, I would have, I would have much preferred to have the team we had last year a lot more excitement. But this is a great team, and you know, this is a veteran professional team that got it done. Is a team like Heiko Travel bad for the league? Hmm. I, I, I would say no. I think there was legitimate competition this year. They didn't make it to the championship. I think Psycho Bunnies would have put up a real fight. Like it would have been, it would have been uh, maybe the cha- one of the greatest championships in the league's history. Uh, game and 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 not make those errors and get 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 it done, get to the championship. It would have been a game we would have been talking about for a long time, I believe. Um, but you see that it just was a matter of, I think the talent was there, and, and I think a lot of the, the parts to compete with a team like, uh, like what Kyle Travel was this year do exist and were there. And I mean, even last year, my team last year, I think, you know, when it came down to it in the quarterfinals, they maybe didn't play their, play their best. They didn't do it, didn't do what got to be done, but they did beat them in the regular season. And I think, I think it's, it's possible to beat it. And I think maybe it just raises the standard a little bit. If you're a guy like Yoni Panagel and next year you're, set, you're setting yourself up to set up a team to knock off Heiko Travel, what would you tell Yoni is the most important? You know, where, where should he start? Should he start, you know, getting that defense, those cornerbacks together to beat them or to focus on the line to stop the Sklar brothers? You know, I think a quarterback is – Probably still the most important component in this league, but but the line is the line is really where the trenches are where it's at. That's what wins and loses the games. Yeah, I can't you can't win with with a subpar with a sub sub uh, you know top anything less than an amazing quarterback. I don't think you'll be able to win in this league. But uh, you have to put a lot of focus in both the O line and your D line to be able to win a championship. Are you coming back with this team next year, Heiko? Yeah, it needs to be seen. Uh, there's probably a lot of moving parts that's going to have to fall into, into place before I make that decision. Heiko, we really appreciate you joining us here on the FM Home Loans AFI League Hotline. Have a good night. Rafi, thanks for everything you do. It makes, it makes it very enjoyable. Thank you. appreciate that. Have a good night. Good night. There you have Mr. Heiko Kaufman himself coming on the show, speaking about what he would do to beat a, to knock off his own team, speaking about his own team, how the year got started, you know, kind of saying it pretty clearly there that, you know, he misses those yeshiva guys. He misses that extra fire. He misses those, you know, those that togetherness, that certain camaraderie that you only get with yeshiva teams. And I'll tell you something, all the players on Heiko Travel, and I'm going to give you a little muster later on, not now, but here's a little bit of the taste. You guys know it yourself. You guys know that it's different when you're on a yeshiva team. You guys know it's different when you're playing for in front of your yeshiva 60 guys, when you're playing in front of an Imre crowd or a TJ crowd or a Merkaz crowd. You know what it's like to have those crowds rocking for your team, for your team. How's that championship game? How's that championship game? You guys didn't have any fans. Nobody came out to watch you. Nobody came out to support you. You guys don't, you know, what's your identity? Who are you guys? You know? Avi Zern, get back to the Emirate team. Get back to your Yeshiva team. Support your guys. Get those Yeshiva guys out. You know, get get the camaraderie, get the family back together. You know, there was nothing better this year than than seeing those Merkaz teams come out, seeing Taurus Chaim kids come out, you know, seeing the TJ, these Yeshiva guys coming out, having a team to support. 
We're going to talk a little bit later on about that. Before we get there, let's speak to our our main guy, our main friend of the show. One of you know, guy that comes on all the time. Big friend of the show. We're going to speak to Hall of Famer, a five-time champion right now. That's one, two, three, four, five. All fingers have gotten ringed on. That's my buddy Svi Sklar. He'll be joining us here on the FM Home Loans AFI League Hotline coming off a, a, a major game where he uh, took, took a lot of pressure on Akiva Shorts. Let's get him right now on the hotline. Let's speak to him right now. Svi, are you looking more forward to Pesach or Perm? I love it all, Ralph. I love it. I love Purim. I love Pesach. What's your favorite? What's what does Besimcha mean to you? It's all about spreading that love, seeing everyone happy, everyone together. What's your favorite part of Purim? Exactly as I said, seeing everyone happy and together. Svi Sklar, talk to me about this team coming together in the beginning of this year, putting all the right pieces together. How'd you do it? Um, well, most of the pieces were there from last year, but there was a lot of back end, specifically with David Abel, which is the main uh, leader and uh, player in the league, and uh, convincing him to come back for one more run. And then uh, talking to Heiko, someone that I call a friend, and uh, seeing if he wanted to be a part of it. And he said yes. Does this championship feel any different than last year's? For me, the feeling is more seeing people around me happy. Um, individually, uh, I didn't feel that much different than last year, but to see Chaim Harris, to see Heiko smile, his son smile and daughter smile, to see my son on the sideline, um, it meant a lot to me. And to see people like Maishi Kahan, that they just got married and they definitely gained cookie points by winning a championship, that, that, it makes it all worth it for me. That's what's left for me. Have you ever been a type of player that has been on a team where, you know, wasn't the best team in the league and you joined it and you said, you know, I want to I wanna make this team my own team and I want to take it, I want to bring it up from the dumps and I want to, you know, win a championship, you know, being the main focus and really taking a team from the, from the bottom to the top? Well, I've done that both in Tackle and in Flag. I've won with... Uh, Four, I've won five championships with four different um, uh, quarterbacks, and I believe I have my own impact. And uh, um, yeah, that's what I do. I don't, I don't take second um, place, and I don't see myself losing that much. That's just not in my mentality. So I feel like I was lucky enough to put together the pieces and deal with the pieces with help from other teammates. But I was definitely involved in all my uh, teams, both in tackle and in flag. Can you take me in the huddle before the game this week? What did you tell the guys? Uh, in, in general, people were confident. I believe I, I told you before the game um, that I believe it's going to be a blowout as long as we play our game. And Maishi Kahan, a vocal leader and an amazing person, he just said, guys, we just have to do our thing. Nice and slow, and I think we proved that, that even though we, we got a touchdown and they scored beautifully, and as you say, methodically, they came down the field. There was no panic. Everyone knew what they had to fix, and uh, we did our thing. Talk to me a little bit about Avi Zern's growth. You know, coming, you know, you saw him as a player on Sion and before he was on your team last year. How has he uh, grown into what he is right now? I mean, I think it was a very... It was amazing to see the playoff run throughout the season. I thought he was the weak link on our team, but when the playoffs came, he was uh, unbelievable. I've never seen him play like that in the finals. Like you said, he zipped the ball all around, and I think the maturity was understanding that he has weapons that could catch the ball, and he doesn't have to run. I believe in the beginning, the, the, the first years of him in the league, he was running a lot, and uh, for him to understand that it's about the team, and he has all these players that can make the catches and adjust, which is probably a very hard mental thing, an unnatural thing for a running, running quarterback. I think that speaks a lot about his character, and he's just an unbelievable person and an amazing friend. I call him a brother. Is Michael Travel the team, the players, is it bad for the league? 
I don't know that for the league. I think every team should strive to make a superstar team and a winning team and a championship team. I think the Psycho Bunnies tried doing that. I believe Press Time tried doing that. Um, DC tried doing that. Um, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Thunder Muffins tried doing that. And at the end of the day, I say this. Psycho Bunnies and Paris Time on any given day to beat us, except they don't have the mental toughness. I talk about this time after time. I will take a player that is not a superstar, but I think the word is a mercenary, correct me if I'm wrong, someone that will dig deep and claw over people that are just amazing, but they're not team players and camaraderie, and they don't want to say hoorah. And uh, everyone tried doing that. They fell short, and it's unfortunate. We stuck together and stuck to our mental game when we were down, and that was it. It looked like your defensive game plan, you know, you at the D-line, also in the zone, in the secondary. It looked like it was really clicking, shut down all over. Coming into the game, is that was that your game plan to really bull rush the quarterback, make him throw off his back foot and have that zone try to pick it off? Yeah, I'll say I'll give a little maybe, maybe a goodbye uh, um, secret. But you, if you don't play throughout the season, and I said that to you so you could uh, um, assure people that this is accurate, in the beginning of the season, the zone wasn't working out perfectly. And my brother, Lady and David, they spoke. Will benefit if you're just going to play man and you're not going to mix it um, 3 2 2 2. Uh, you're not going to win a championship. And I think my brother and David that led the defense, um, they put together an amazing, amazing plan, and it worked out at the end. I spoke a little bit before on the show that this team could be a dynasty. I mean, you know, you got Avi's earning the prime, you, you and your brother, Davida Bell, you know, with the main, you know, core players, this team could possibly win, you know, four or five, six championships in a row. Is that something you're trying to do? You're trying to accomplish that? I don't think I'm trying to accomplish that at the moment. That's not something that motivates me. Um, I'm not. What motivates me is, like I said in the beginning, seeing people around me happy. And as long as I feel like those people are around me, I may go back. I don't have plans at the moment. I'm not feeling that I need to. But if I feel that people that I love are coming back, you know, um, I bumped into Kissel today. And I'm like, Kiff, what's going to be? He's like, listen, we're all saying you're not going to come back. I'm going to go get married in this session, and I'll come back, and we'll all get it back together. So if that happens, that is motivation for me to get Kiff as a married guy at championship. He's <laughs> someone that I love and respect. So that, that, that's how I could come back, nothing else. What about a different scenario? You know, you, you, you know you're a Rebbe and you're Yeshiva. Let's say your whole shear comes to you, all 10 guys in your shear, 12 guys in your shear. And they say, Rebbe, we're putting together a team. We want you to be the star player. We want you to join us. What do you say to that? My, I'm not in successive case. I'm here to win a championship. And uh, my loyalty is to the, my, the people that have been riding with me for a while. So uh, I'll probably decline politely. It doesn't, doesn't speak to me, really. Now, we, we even, put- even if they would be a superstar team, I have the guys that I... It's just, just like Heiko, you know, I would ride with Heiko as much as he wants if I, if I come back. You know, we, we, we heard you say that you won four cha- five championships with four different players, four different quarterbacks. You know, take another player. Let's, you know, let's, let's talk about Avi Zern for a second. You know, he is not a player that won uh, four, four cha- five championships with four different teams. He's won two championships with the same team, a superstar team, a team like Golden State Warriors, you know. You know, let, let's say a player is speaking about Avi Zern and says, you know, I want, I want to see Avi Zern win a championship with not, you know, superstars at every single position. I want to see him win a championship with his old team that he left two years ago. What would you say to that? I would say it's up to Avi. If Avi's about um, winning, then I would say stick with us if he could see himself winning with another team. I definitely understand that emotionally, but I think when you get married, it's just by default you're disconnected from um, having that yeshiva feel, not that you're not associated with it, but what, what do you want me to unmarry myself and be a part of a yeshiva? Um, so 
it's, it, it's really up to what your purpose in life and the friendships that you've made. I, I look at everyone, me specifically, that I can say I was the glue between both worlds in our team. Um, so for me, I have people that I love all around. Zvi Sklar, five-time champion, Hall of Famer. Thank you so much for joning on the show tonight. MVP, MVP. MVP and other nights as well. We appreciate it. Rafi, thank you so much. You're awesome. Love to all. We'll find. There you have Svi Sklar coming up on the show, explaining pretty simply, you know, why he likes to be on the better teams, why he, you know, he's coming into every year winning a championship. That's on his mind. You can't really blame him. That's on the minds of most people. I do want to say, you know, there are players on this team that did not win championships with other teams, that did not win champions with the Yeshivas. You know, it takes me back to, uh, you know, wouldn't want to talk about these guys regularly on the show, but just to give a little muscle, you know, it speaks to me about LeBron James. He goes to Miami. He wins two rings. He wins two championships. But then he's got a little voice inside his head that says, can I do it with my hometown? Can I do it with the homegrown players? Can I do it with, you know, not just a team that signed superstars from all over? And he went back and he won a championship. And I guarantee you in 20 years, that championship is going to mean more to him than probably everything in his life. Everything, every win that he got in his life. Every championship, every gold medal that he got. So there are players on this team. There are players in Chicago Travel that I like to look them up in the eye. And I like to say, hey, buddies. Go win one with your team. Go win one with your boys. Get back with Braun. Get back with Fagan. Get back with Kiffel. Get back with the boys. Get back with Lyft. Get back with the real Hebra. And go win a championship with the boys. Go win a championship with the brothers. You know? Yeah, you got two rings. Yeah, Shkoyach. You got to feel good about it? You should feel good about it. You deserve it. But you won two championships with a rig team. You won two championships with the star players from all over. I want to see you win one now with the boys. You got two rings. You're going to the Hall of Fame. It's going to happen. But now go back. Win one with the hometown. Win one with the boys. And there you have it. It's been a, a beautiful, wonderful season. I've enjoyed it tremendously. The feedback that I got this year, I really appreciate it. A lot of love. Text messages, emails, WhatsApps, phone calls. It's been so beautiful. I really appreciate it. It's been a beautiful season. I hope to come back and do this again. We got a championship crew here at the headquarters we win the championship every single year with my producer, the editor, the backdrop, the cameras, and it all. I appreciate you. I appreciate you joining us on the show every week and the broadcast. That's going to be a wrap, folks. The 30th FM Home Loans A5. Thank football. Championship Holy Land Bowl goes to none other than Heiko Travel. They walked through easily through the playoffs. Destroyed in the championship. They raised the Holy Land Bowl. They deserve it. Kola Kavot to them. Mazal Tov to them. Thanks everybody for joining us. Have a beautiful other. A magnificent Purim. A life-changing Pesach. And we'll see you on the other side.